Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to turn your images into a motion video by applying the Ken Burns effect in Camtasia Studio. So let's dive in right now. Hey guys, my name is Rob Moore and this video is part of a new video series on creating professional looking video tutorials using Camtasia Studio. If you ever want to include still images in your videos, or perhaps you want to make a complete video out of only images, perhaps as a wedding or a birthday or some other event video, using this simple technique will help those images come to life and give your videos a more professional look and the look of motion. The technique is called the Ken Burns effect and is very easy to do in Camtasia. Let me show you how it's done. So here in Camtasia, I'm gonna create a brand new video from scratch, uh, just a simple video, and I'm gonna create it using three images. Actually, before we bring the images into Camtasia, let's set our canvas size. So come up here to the top, click Project Settings, and let's just make sure we're set to 1920 by 1080. That's what I want my video to end up being. So we've set the canvas size. Let's change the frame rate to 60 frames per second, and then click Apply. Now we want to import our images. So click the plus sign here, then click Import Media. And now I've already prepared three images. I've got three images here that we want to bring in. So select all of those. And I also have uh, a music file that I want to bring in as well. So let's bring all these into the media bin. Okay, now that we have the images into the media bin, let's drag them down to our timeline. Okay, and we see the three images here. Now, none of them are the same aspect ratio of the 1920 uh, by 1080 video canvas size. So what we wanna do, I, I wanna get rid of these black bars on the sides. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch the images to fill the screen. So let's start with the first image and just drag the edges so that the screen fills it. Now let's move the image up a little bit to put the boat more in the center. Okay, and now let's do that with the second image. Let's fill the screen with that. Whoops. And center the boat in the frame. And then the third image as well. Okay, now the next thing I wanna do is let's decide how long we want each of these images to display. So as we can see right now, if we right click and click on duration, I can see that this is set to four and a half seconds. So they were all brought in at four and a half seconds. That must be what my default setting is. So let's just change these. I'm gonna put each image on a different track and I'm gonna select them all. I'm gonna right click, click on duration. And I'm gonna say I want these to display for five seconds, or let's say six, sec six seconds each. There we go, so now they're all set to six seconds. Let's just zoom this out a little bit. Okay, now let's put one after the other. So now if we click the playhead, each one of these images will display for six seconds before moving on to the next image and so on. Okay, now, in order to apply the Ken Burns effect, we have to add an animation. So we want to do that to each of these images separately. So the first thing I do before adding an animation is I look at the image and I decide, how do I want this to animate? With the Ken Burns effect, you typically add a zoom as well as a pan. So zoom is where you zoom in or out, and a pan is if the image moves side to side or up or down. Uh, and any combination of zooms and pans applied at the same time will give the effect of motion, and that's called the Ken Burns effect. So with this image, in order to apply this, we wanna add an animation. So click on animations here and drag a custom animation down. Now the left side of the arrow is the start of the animation, the right side is the end. Let's put the playhead at the start of the animation, and let's put the image where we want it to start. Now we go to the end of the animation, and now let's add a zoom. So let's go up here to scale and start changing the scale. Okay, now let's move this up. Each time you make a change, you wanna use this playhead to go back to what the state of the image was at the beginning of the arrow. And then you can drag it through to see how it's changing. So right there you can see I've created a just a zoom, a simple zoom effect on this boat, and I think that's 
that's good enough. But now in order to have this animation take effect over the six seconds that the image is showing, we want to drag this animation arrow all the way to the left and then grab the right of the arrow and drag it to the right. There, now let's put the playhead at the beginning and press play to see what that looks like. As you see, it zooms in, then changes to the next image. So I like that, that's good. So now let's move on to the next image. Let's repeat the steps, go up to animation, drag a custom animation down, pick a starting point. Let's have this one pan up a little bit. So let's pick that as a starting point. And then the ending point, we can, it's up a little bit and let's zoom it a little bit as well. That might be a little too much. See what that looks like. I think it actually raises a little too much. I like that. So now let's place our arrow, our animation arrow. Okay. Okay, now for the third and final one. Before we drag the animation uh, arrow down onto the element, the image element, let's change the size of this. Let's zoom it and then pick a spot like so. Okay, so now when we've dragged the animation arrow onto the image, both the starting and ending points are set to what I had the image set at, the zoom and the pan, before I dragged the animation arrow onto the element. Okay, so now let's decide how we want this to move. Let's say we want it to start here and then finish by moving a little bit to the side and maybe with a little bit of a zoom. See what that looks like. I like that. And let's drag the arrow from start to finish. Okay, now let's just drag our playhead through to see what that looks like. Slow zoom, another zoom and raise up a little bit, and another zoom and over to the left. I like that. Okay, so that is essentially the Ken Burns effect. Now something else I like to do to uh, uh, just make this come together is add transitions between each of the images. So an easy and quick way to do that is to select all three, come up to transitions, and let's just add a, a fade transition between them all and drag this down. And then as you can see, that added a fade between these images here and then another between here. It also added a fade at the very beginning and then a fade out at the very end. So let's see what that looks like. So it fades in and then zooms. Then it fade transitions to the next image and a slow zoom there as well. And then another fade transition and then a zoom. Cool. Okay, the final thing I want to do is add the music track. So let's go back up to media. And here is the music track we dragged in. So let's bring that down here. I always like to put my music tracks on the bottom frame. And as we can see here, the music is much longer than our video, so let's just cut it off. Just pressed S there to split and then delete. And actually, if we just want to pull this back here to end it at the same time. And finally, I want to add a fade in and a fade out of the music. So let's go to audio effects, bring a fade in. and set that and then a fade out at the end. Whoops, here we go. There we go, now let's see what that looks like. Very nice, and that's it. And that's how you apply the Ken Burns effect to images in a video using Camtasia Studio.
If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and click the thumbs up button down below. And for more helpful Camtasia tips, consider subscribing to my channel and click the bell icon down below so you're notified as soon as I release new videos. Also, if there's anything you'd like me to cover in a future video, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Thank you.